Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Schwartz. I'm back with another How to Draw video from Mr. Schwartz's Art Hour. This week is the final member of the Big Four. Aang, Toph, Katara are all finished, and now it's a fan favorite character, Sokka. Meet me on the other side of this scene transition, and let's get ourselves started, shall we? All right, ladies and gentlemen, so to draw Sokka, let's start ourselves off with what else? A circle. Now for this circle, this is basically going to be from the top of his head, round about the top of his head, to about the bottom part of his nose, just to give you some reference for later on. So once we have that circle established, we can draw the middle line for his head, and his head is going to be turned that way. So we're going to want to draw it slightly off to the right. We're going to have it go a fair distance down away from the circle. All right, and then what we want to do is we want to draw on the line for Sokka's eyes, and his eyes are going to be located at about this point. And you can see when I draw the eye line that I'm going to have it angling down ever so slightly this way, because his, uh, his head is going to be tilted at a slight angle. And now that we have this circle and this line, what we want to do next is we want to draw the sides of his face over here just to help establish everything. So we're going to come to the side of the circle here, and we're going to flatten the part of the circle out just a little bit. Because Sokka's head is not so cylindrical like Katara, Toph's, and Aang's were, his head is actually more of a cylinder shape as we go down. So I'm going to extend down, and I'm going to go down a fair distance until I get to about here. And then I want to come at an angle until I meet that middle line for the head. Now, of course, we're going to readjust this later on. This is just to get ourselves something solid to start off with. And then I want to come from here and move at about the same angle, sculpting as I go along. Until my line over here reaches a, about the same plane that this line is over here before it changed. So it should be about equal and then this is going to go up and that will be in the ear once we get there. Now looking at this whole thing, I put this eye line a little too far up. So I'm going to go ahead and move that down a ways. The eye line should usually always be around midway, the, around the middle of the face. You always want to try and make sure that the eye line is about at the middle of the face because you have to leave enough room up here for the top of the head as well as the bottom. All right, that looks better. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to zoom into this section here and we're going to start drawing the features for Sokka's face. So to go ahead and draw in Sokka's features, we're going to start as always with the nose. Now the nose, we're going to put a fair distance down from the middle of intersection of these two lines. We're going to put it about here. So on my circle, it's right about near where the circle would end. And the nose, again, we're going to keep it simple. It just goes out a little ways before it comes back in, and as it comes back in, it's going to pass over the middle line for the face till about here. And then what we want to do is we're going to draw the one nostril that we would see, which is going to be about right here. Just make it a little comma shape. We're going to make the nose, the top of the nose actually go in a little ways more. There we go. And now for the eyes, the eyes, the bottom of them is going to rest right on the eye line and the top of them is going to be a little ways above. So what we're going to do for the eyes is we're going to draw him with a little bit of a sneaky expression with his eyes half closed as if Sokka's thinking about one of his grand ideas. So what we're going to do for that is I'm going to come right around here And I'm going to draw the bottom of the eye, which is just a little curve shape like that. And we're going to come over here and place this one in. And again, you want to place it a little bit closer to the nose. So it looks like his head is actually tilted. So right now it looks like Sokka is asleep and it doesn't really look like Sokka just yet. What we want to do then is I'm going to draw a shape 
that comes out flat on the top. and curved on the sides. So I'm, I'm drawing the outline for Sokka's eyes right now. This part here and here we are going to eventually erase, but it's helpful to put it in right now so that we have a firm establishment of where the eyes are gonna be and making sure that the eyes look good when compared to each other. So this one you're gonna see is a little bit lower than this one is and a little bit smaller again that is because a he's looking off that way and b because his head is tilted ever so slightly so it makes sense that this eye is a little bit lower than the pre than the eye on the left side all right now to actually fill to actually put in heavier the part of the eye that i want to keep i'm going to come up here and i'm going to darken in the top of the eyelid And now the tricky part can, can be the irises and pupils of his eyes. The reason is because we're going to draw them so that they are hidden, so that half of them is about, about half of the eye is hidden underneath the eyelid. And we're going to make him looking off that way. So I'm going to start right on the edge of the eye over here. And I'm going to draw a small shape. Sokka is a male, so that, and he's a little bit older, so his, his uh, pupil is a little, or iris I think is what it is, is a little bit smaller than one such as Katara or Toph. And we can draw the other one in over here. Again, make it just a tiny bit smaller. So then what we can do after that is we can erase out the part that we no longer need, which is the side of the eye here and here. And then to draw in the rest of the eye, we're going to draw a half circle of shine on the right part of each eye. And then draw, and then basically fill in most of the rest of it with black. That shows us where Sokka is looking. And we're going to be drawing Sokka with a I know what to do sort of face with his eyebrows highly raised up. So, be But before we get to that, we want to go ahead and put in his mouth. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to the middle line here uh, at about this distance down and we're going to start drawing a line at about this angle and it's going to go and go and go until it would be at the same place if I drew a line down as the edge of the eye. They should connect. I'm going to draw the line over to over here and it's going to go a little ways past where the nose is to about here. Now this looks strange right now but just give me a little bit. What we need to do then is draw the bottom part of the mouth and to do that we're going to draw a line that goes down like so until it reaches about here and then we're going to draw it so that the line arcs down at round about the same angle that this one did. And it's going to reach right and be right before it reaches the middle line. We're going to stop. And then we're going to draw a, a shape that curves. So the side of his mouth actually curves instead of, his, instead of going straight. And then the top of the line should meet off the edge about like that. So we should have a shape that looks like this. So you can see it a little bit better. Let me move my adjust, adjust my camera. There we go. Now to fill in the detail in here because it looks a little bit strange right now where you can draw the teeth and the teeth are just going to be a shape that comes down and then make it so that the teeth curve a little bit so they look like they have a little bit more dimension than just a straight line. About like so. And then we're going to draw the tongue which, is just, which for now is just going to be a line that stops about here. Because then the rest of his mouth down here is dominated by his teeth. Which again, try and make that so that the teeth are curving. Like so. We can fill in that part with black. 
And there we have Sokka with a very Sokka expression for his mouth. And now we can move ourselves back up here and we're going to draw the eyebrows. And then we're going to concentrate on the outside shape of Sokka's face. So the eyebrows, like I said, we're going to place them very far up because the higher up you place them, the more Sokka-like they'll become. You'll hear me say that a lot. And anyone who's seen the show understands what I mean by that. So we're going to place the eyebrows about here and here. You can see those little, if you can see those little dots I made. Now we're going to draw the eyebrows so that the bottom line has a little bit of an arc to it. So you can see the more that you arc an eyebrow, and really eyebrows can really help solidify an expression. So you see that if I make the eyebrows a little bit thicker up here, and then they're going to taper off into a point. You can see by placing them in an, in an arc like this, I've now gone from Sokka having that expression to having a highly I know exactly what I'm doing sort of expression to it. We can do the same thing over here. And this eyebrow is going to continue off a little ways to the end to the edge of the of the face and I'm actually going to have to readjust this because the eyebrow should not go further than this on the head. And again, once we reach the top of the arc, you can see this one has a little bit more defined of an arch to it where this one is a little bit more graceful. And again, it should end at a point. So here is what you should have so far. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom out once again and we're going to work on reestablishing the outline for his face based on these proportions that we now have. There won't be too much adjusting, but just little things here and there that will really help solidify the character to look like the actual on-screen model. Okay, so to make this Sokka look even more like Sokka, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to this line that we drew at the very beginning, and I'm going to make this connection much more of a... For one thing, I'm going to make it darker, and I'm going to make it a much more graceful connection. So it's not going to be... It's, the cheek shouldn't be so sharp. It should have a softer edge to it. I'm also going to make this line come in just a little ways further than I did before. So that when this comes out and it should start curving back up into the head at around here. So you can see the eyebrow ends up connecting to the side of the head. And from here, there's not going to be much additional space between the eyebrows and the top of the head. So you should only have about this much space between the eyebrows and the top of the head. Now I'm going to continue on over here. Let's make it so you can see it a little bit better. For the back of the head, I don't want to make it start curving back in right away. We want to have it a little bit flatter up here on top. And only when it reaches out about here should it start curving back down. So you want to have a decent amount of space back here to show the back of the skull. So this is going to reach down and it will reach back further than the jaw because it should. That's how the skull works. There's a lot of space behind the skull from between the jawline and the back. So it should only go down until it reaches about where the bottom of the eye would be and then it's going to stop. I'll clean that up. So we only have the line that I need. I'm going to make it have a little bit more of a curve. There we go. Now I'll clean everything up so you can see what we should actually have. And now before I do the ear portion, I'm going to finish off the jawline here. So really what we have here is pretty much what we need. There's just a little bit of adjustment that we should do. I'm just going to reestablish this line here. And then when we reach the the chin part, the chin should be a little bit rounded. It should not come to a point. And then I'm going to give the jawline just a little bit more space here. Maybe have it come up here and then come back out. And it should go out to about here. And then it's going to come up at 
around, I think that's a 90 degree, that's, that's a 45 degree angle. Come about at a 45 degree angle until it reaches about the same space, around the same angle as the edge of the mouth here. Now this part to this part is gonna be taken up by Saga's ear. So let's go ahead and set that in after I clean this stuff up. And just real quick too, before, you, before I zoom in here, you can add a small line right here and right here to help accentuate those eyebrows just a little bit more. All right, zoom into the ear. All right, so to go ahead and draw his ear, we're actually going to make it so that the ear appears to go into his face because of, just because of the perspective that we're drawing him at. So we're gonna draw it down at an angle like so, a little bit steeper of an angle. And it's going to stop at round about here, which if you draw a line straight down, you can see it's just about to hit where the eyebrow would be. And then from there, it's a simple matter of drawing the ear. This one, you can draw it so it's a little bit more plain-like, so it's not smooth, but it's made up of, of edges, of straighter edges like this. And this one should go until it's about to reach the jawline. And then it's going to angle up and meet into the jawline. So looking at mine, I think I made mine a little bit too small. So I'm going to make this line jut out just a little bit more. So we get more of a Sokka-like ear. And we can draw in the middle detail, which is simply a little loop here that then goes up and traces around like so. And so you don't connect those two in the middle because that helps give the illusion of the inside of the ear. And now that we have all that taken care of, one of the last things we're going to do is we're going to come up here and take care of Sokka's hair. So Sokka's hair is so Sokka's hair is incredibly distinctive. It's one of the most distinct hairstyles in the series. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to draw back in the top part of the middle line because we need that part. And what we're going to do is I'm going to come to about here with some decent amount of space left between this and the eyebrows and this in the top of the head. And I'm going to draw a line that does not go straight. This is not like Aang's tattoo. This one is going to just curve up and disappear into the head up here. This side is going to do something a little bit different. It's going to come up like this before it moves back down a little ways and then it's going to slope back up into, again, the top of the head. And then what we want to do from here is we're going to draw the side of Sokka's hair. Now, if you were drawing him from the third season, you would actually need to establish the side of his hair with a pretty heavy line which you would, it would look something like this. Come up here to about the eye level, and then it will move around the eyebrow and go up into the hair. And then based on where that enters into the hair, you can then draw a line that goes back about like so. This part signifies the top part of his hair that he has through the entire show. The side of his hair right here is either in the first and second seasons, it's just established by a change in color because he shaves that part, or in the third season where he actually has this hair. Now, if you want to draw him from the first or second season, you'll just keep it looking just like this. If you want to draw him from the third season, it's very simple. You would just want to make this side of his head have a little bit more depth to it like this. By doing that, you make it look like that there's hair there and it makes the side of his skull a little bit thicker. And then you could also do things like break up this part of the hair with just a few little hair lines like so. So either way, the option is yours. I'm going to keep it so that he, I'm gonna keep his look from the first and second seasons. Regardless, the back of his hair is going to look the same. So to do that part, what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to come to this side and I'm going to make just a little extra little bump like this. So by doing that, I make I give the illusion that the top of his head is covered with hair and is not simply just a skull cap sort of thing. 
And now we're going to draw his hair, which is which normally you would see the ponytail part, but we're actually only going to see a shape back here based on based on our perspective of Sokka. So putting the ear into focus because that'll help you. I'm going to come to basically halfway between the bottom of the eyebrow and the top of the eye. About right here. And then I'm going to come to about here on the top of the head. And inside there, I'm going to make a shape that bulges out before it comes together at around here. So this is the basic outline for what we're going to see of Sokka's hair. Now to actually make it look like his hair, I'm going to lightly erase it. And I'm just going to add a few little hair details here and there. Make it so that some pieces of hair overlap each other. Like so. It goes... Make it so that some pieces of the hair go further out, some, of the, some pieces go further in. Little things like that. To make it actually look like his hair. And then over here, I'll make this go further in before it comes out. You don't have to follow the, the exact same thing I'm doing. This is just a brief little ideas of how to make it look more like Sokka's hair. And if you don't think that looks like Sokka's hair at all, you can always add your own little details. You can have a little pieces of hair that go out like this, anything like that. It's actually very easy to customize what Sokka's hair is going to look like from the back. Okay. Now we have Sokka's face basically completely finished. So what I'd like to finish off with is his neck area. So moving the camera on downwards. So coming down to the neck area, you can see I left a little bit of space up here so you can see where the back of the skull entered the ear. Basically along that same, if I was to draw a line straight down, this is where I'd want the back of the neck to start. And basically what I want to do is I want to draw it so that the neck juts back and out at an angle like so, at a curving angle, like so. And then the front part of his neck is going to emerge about here. Again, they should both be going back at about the same angle so that it looks correct. And then to finish that whole thing off, I'm going to draw a little muscle line right here. And then I'm going to connect those two the two necklines with a curving line like this for Sokka's necklace that he always wears. I'm pretty sure he wears it in the third season. I could be wrong. I'm certain that some fan of Avatar is going to tell me because that's just the way these things go. That's the great thing about the internet. But then I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to draw a sh the back part of it so give it a little bit more shape and dimension. And then it's going to come down and follow basically the same path that the first line did. It's going to reach here, and then, instead of curving up, it's actually going to go up at a straight line and then disappear into the neck. And now, just a few little details that are on that necklace. I believe it's broken up, like, as such. It has a few little sections, just like this. And then, as it moves around, you want to start adjusting how the lines look as well. That really helps give the idea of the three-dimensionality of this piece. So on this side, the line should be going that way. And when it reaches around to the middle, the line should be going fairly straight down before they start moving that way. All right. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is Sokka all finished up. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to, as I always do with these things, ink this up. And then I'm going to come back to you when it's all finished with some final thoughts. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Sokka is finished. I want to thank you all very much for sticking with me, especially if you stuck with me from the beginning of these Avatar How to Draw videos. I really do appreciate it. These have been, by and large, the most successful videos that I've done so far. And this has been another episode of Mr. Schwartz's Art Hour. Thank you very, very much for watching this. I really do appreciate it. And just as a quick note, um, I am not going to be here for the next two weeks. I'm going on a big summer vacation. So for the next two weeks, you will not see anything from me, which is why I did the Momo video last week. So once I get back, there's going to be another Avatar themed video. And since we have gotten through all of the heroes of Avatar, I think it's time to get to a fan favorite character, a character that 
starts out as a villain, but gets a little bit more complicated as the series goes on. I'll leave you in that suspense until I get back. So thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, and this is Mr. Schwartz, signing off. Have yourselves a great day. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Schwartz. I'm back for another How to Draw video, Avatar The Last Airbender themed. This week is the final member of the Big Four, in my opinion. We've got Aang, we've got Toph, we've got Katara, and now we have Sokka. Very much a fan favorite character from what I've heard. Alright ladies and gentlemen, 